Okay, in the interest of the last two projects I have have just not worked out, I've decided that we're going to go ahead and make up this pattern by Ann Adams Patterns um, here, and it's going to be out of this little ditzy print floral fabric that I have. I already have the pattern pieces taken out, laid out flat, and ironed, and I'm just going to go ahead and look at the scale of measurements here to see what the 1230, which is what this size is, corresponds to. So the 30 is the, the bust measurement. So that's about three inches off from my measurements. The waist is only about a half inch off and the hips are about three inches off. Given that this skirt seems to flare out quite a bit, I'm not overly concerned with that. So Honestly, a 14, 32 would have been just about perfect for me. So I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add in seam allowance. And hopefully that will make up the difference here. But first I need to figure out how much seam allowance that there is. So I'm going to go ahead and read over these instructions. There's only one page of instructions. Just on the front. And see what this looks like. Okay, I see. Half inch allowed for all seams. Use exact seam allowance or garment will not fit correctly. So we will go ahead and add in another half inch, I think. Okay, I think I have just barely managed to squeeze this pattern onto this fabric. I had about two yards of this fabric and hmm, hmm, <laughs> hmm. There wasn't a lot of, let's just say there was um, less room than I thought there'd be. So I might have to just tempt fate and see if I can cut part six through large O. So that's the large O. And I'm assuming I need to leave a hem. Just has hem lower edges, but I'd like to leave room for a hem. So probably leave room for a half inch hem. Yep. But what I will not be able to do is extend the seam allowances any, so that's fine. I am going to go ahead and pin these and because I don't want to get yelled at by y'all, I'm going to go ahead and do it off camera. <laughs> if you don't see it, I didn't do it, right? Right? And at this point, I am marking all of my markings on the back of the fabric with a colored pencil. I'm fairly certain this will wash out because it's a water-soluble pencil, but you know, you know. And here I am incriminating myself and showing the pins, pins through the uh, vintage pattern. Please don't yell at me. Um, and I'm cutting this pattern out with pinking shears so that I don't have to finish the edges because I'm lazy and that is a historically housewife accurate way of, you know, making a dress back then. Because, you know, the, the home overlock didn't exist at the time, and nobody got time to finish their seams. Now, these two little ego head shapes, these are the uh, bits that go over the shoulder, and I'm just kind of pinning where they need to actually be gathered, and then sewing them basically on top of each other. These are the bits that go over the waist, so I could turn them right sides out, and they're just kind of patched, they're top stitched on to the shoulders and at the waist, and that's how those go on. So on thinner fabrics and where I have enough room to maneuver, I'll usually just use the corner and pinch it and then turn out that just that corner, and that's usually on fine fabrics, that gives me a nice sharp edge, and then just pressing that flat after it's all turned out was usually enough. There's no poking with scissors or with pins or point turners or anything like that going on there. I just used the corner of the fabric to turn out the corner. And now that it's in its shape, I'm setting it aside to be pressed later. Alright, so step six, this says belts. Fold belts seven. Oh, it's corresponding piece seven. Okay, fold belt seven lengthwise and stitch edges, leave shaped ends free, trim the seams, and turn. So here's the shaped edges. I went ahead and ironed them as well, just to kind of keep things tidy. So we'll stitch along this side and then all the way down, leaving this end free, and then we'll turn it out. 
I'll do that on both of them. Okay, I may or may not be skipping around on these instructions. Sorry. All right, so it says second, clip lower edges of front yolks at the large circle, which was here. Then baste under half an inch between clips and armhole edges, so to here. So I've already done that, and then I went ahead and ironed them flat, and I'm just setting those, setting that pressing with some pins so it doesn't shift around. Okay, and ninth, side sections. Baste under half an inch at edges of sections, four, top stitch over openings at sides of dress, match notches and small O, large O in four at side seams. So it did say to baste half an inch under, but what I did instead was I cut out four and I just top stitched, well I like, I sandwiched them together basically. Um, right sides together and then I stitched around and then I turned it right sides out and then I pressed it flat. I just think this, because this is such a lightweight fabric, I think it gives it a little bit more body. Um, I did interface these at first but then I decided I hated the interfacing so we're going to go with this instead. Because this is where it connects to the side um, and then the belt connects on one side as well so I think it's important that this is a little bit more structured. Okay, so it says first, fronts, gather bodice edges of fronts to small, to between, oh my god, let's, let's start this over. <laughs> so first, fronts, gather bodice edges of fronts to, which is this piece, between small double O's, which is here and here, and then here and here, but it does not tell you what to gather it down to. Um, then make bound buttonholes in right front between small O's, basically here and here, going all the way down. Stitch under half an inch at fronts of two clipping in on curves. So basically this, because when this piece folds over, like so, it becomes the facing for this dress. So that's why there are bound buttonholes here, which means I need to make use of the scraps that I have. But I think first I should gather these points down. But then also I think it would be easier to do the bound buttonholes first because that just makes more sense to do it while it's still flat. I feel like it would be easier. So we're going to do the bound buttonholes first. It's going to be really hard to see on this fabric, but I'm just going to draw in some lines that I hope will dark enough to transfer to the other side. Yes, they are. Okay, perfect. Because in order to do the, to do the bound buttonholes, I'm going to have to stitch a little square fabric on the other side and then cut that slit open and then turn it right sides out. And then of course the facing will go in and cover that raw fabric. So I'm just going to mark these with a disappearing pen. This pen will disappear when heat is applied, so when I press it. But it won't be noticeable anyway because it's on the edge. So I have opinions about bound buttonholes. On the one side, I love the way they look. On the other side, I don't enjoy the process of making them, or making them evenly. Um, half of that was my fault because those squares are way too tiny. It, it, eh, it was okay. But they do look very nice on a garment. I'll give them that. And in this horribly framed shot is where I'm cutting open these slits for the bound buttonholes and then turning the fabric right, wrong sides, to the inside so that I can um, press it in place and then stitch it down. I found that it was easier to stitch the buttonholes closed after I turned out the fabric and um, then sewed it down. And this is kind of where you could see where my squares were way too small because this fabric is not behaving when I tried to press it. I just didn't have enough fabric to work with there. So I was trying to squeeze very small fabric into 
too big a space, <laughs> basically. So, like I said, I love to look about mountain holes, but I, I clearly don't know what I'm doing when I'm making them, as as you can see here, because this this was a struggle. <laughs> And here I'm just going in and hand gathering the, I think it's the shoulder? Yeah. I'm just hand gathering the shoulder to fit that shoulder yoke over it by hand. Because it didn't need to be gathered down that far, so I really wanted more direct control over what I was doing there. And then we just very carelessly stroked those gathers into some semblance of sort of order. That was my phone, giving me an alert. And then I'm just kind of dropping that shoulder yoke right on top where it will bit where it will get top stitched right on top of the gathers and that shoulder seam. Just top stitched right in place. It was great. And then I did the same thing for the waist yoke. I just top stitch it right on top of the hand gathered gathers. I do a lot of batch processing when I'm sewing, I just find it to be more productive. So in these next few clips you're going to see me top stitch on the waist yokes, the shoulder yokes, the um, belt so that they can be turned out, and of course the back seam, side seam, one of the seams on the dress, I, I think it's the skirt seam. Um, but I tend to do that where I get all my pieces prepared at the desk, the table, and then I take it all to the sewing machine and sew it all at once, just because I find it more productive, even though I only have to walk like two feet away, but convenience, you know? It's a, it's what I do. So remember when I said we'll be turning out those belts? Okay, yeah, this is turning out those belts. So the first thing I do is trim off the seam allowance, and then I have this wonderful little tool that I'm using right there where I'll basically grab the other side of a tube, and you just ruche all the fabric onto that, and grab the other side, and then basically pull it through. Just be careful when you're doing it, because once that little hook undoes itself, it's really hard to get it back in. And then I just kind of like pinch and wiggle the fabric around until it comes to you know, this is the, the seam is at the bottom, and then press it flat, and we're done. It's super easy. That tool is my favorite little thing. You could still buy it at Joann's. I don't know what it's called, but it's great. It's a little ring at the end and a long stick with the hook at the end, and it's, it's wonderful. Game changing. Love it. Alright, now finally we're starting some assembly of the dress. I am seaming the back to the front of the shoulder seams and the side seams. And then after that, I hope, I think, we'll be adding the waist yokes. Yes, and there they are, the waist yokes that will get top stitched down. At this point, I decided to turn my attention to the facing, and I ironed, I pressed over the edges of the facing so that when it folds over, I'll have a nice, neat edge that I could just then fell stitch down before I go in and finish the buttonholes.
And in order to get that cute little point at the button bracket, I just top stitch just where I've pinned there. So when I fold it out, it forms this nice corner that you see here. And that's how that is shaped. Easy. And then I did the same on the other side. So I decided against actually um, stitching down the edges of the facing because this is really thin fabric. I didn't want the stitches to show through the other side. And then it's also going to be held in place when I finish the buttonholes. So instead, I just took a running stitch and just finished off where I pressed down the edges of that facing so that they wouldn't, you know, unravel and expose the raw edge after washing or anything like that. So that's instead how I decided to finish off the facings, which just a nice clean running stitch where I pressed it over. And then it's time for sleeves. And one day I will learn how to do a fitted sleeve because I prefer those, but this required gathered sleeves kind of. So I'm just running the gathering stitches or I think I'm pleating it actually. I decided to pleat it instead so that they would fit into the arm side a little bit better. And you can see that nice little slight puff. And then I have to figure out which sleeve goes where to set in the sleeves. I don't know why. Setting sleeves is a little bit difficult for me. I get confused very easily. Now the sleeves were set in by machine, but the hem of the sleeves was done by hand because I didn't want really any visible top stitching. So doing just like little prick stitches to finish off the hem of the sleeve was more subtle. So that's what I went with. And then the hem, which is my favorite part because I can't mess it up. Um, and I did this with a herringbone stitch. Again, I didn't want too much visible stop, top stitching. So I went with the herringbone because it shows the least amount of thread on the outside of the fabric. And then there we go, the finished dress. Um, it is a very cute dress. I regret that I didn't have enough fabric to do the ex the bigger seam allowances like I was planning to get it to fit better because this dress doesn't actually fit me very well. You could see the fabric pulling, which is why I put a cardigan over it. But then ultimately I actually ended up gifting this friend or gift gifting this dress to a friend of mine um, because it it was cute but it just didn't fit me the way I wanted it okay, to. And I think that's all I have for this video so if you stuck around this far thank you for watching if you would like to see more videos from me please hit subscribe and the like button and if you have any questions please feel free to ask them down below um, and I guess I'll see you in my next one bye